The Honorable David Ocheng is a member of parliament representing the good people of Uganya. He is our guest this hour in the studio. David Ocheng, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Kenya's biggest conversation, the hot seat. Thank you. Thank you. The last time we spoke with you, you were in the 12th parliament. That's why. Right. Now you're back in the 13th parliament <laughs> in the same, same political party. What's the name of that political party? It's called the Movement for Democracy and Growth. Movement MDG. That's for why. Democracy and Growth. Yes. Yes. MDG. Not mm -hmm. Medium Development Goals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> MDG. This is MDG. Movement yeah. for. for Democracy uh, and Growth. And growth. Yeah. Yeah. When the... When William Ruto was declared winner and he was then declared president-elect, there were political parties such as yours that actually already started conversations with him even before he was sworn in as president. Yes. And MDG was one of those, you know, that said, we are going to work with the Kenya Kwanzaa administration. Yes. We are going to support you in the way, in the move that you're making. Yes. Did you actually sign a post-coalition agreement? Yes, we did. Yeah. Yeah, we did sign a post-election post agreement yeah, post with, uh, with Kenya Kwanzaa. Mm -hmm. um, I think with the second one after UDM mm -hmm. post-election. And, uh, yeah, it was basically, I would call it a protest. To the protest yeah really a protest because um you know we, we went into azimio mm -hmm. um to try to get a president and, and and to you know win seats and you know where i come from i come from the bloody western kenya i'm i'm, I'm, I'm from Mugenya. but as soon as the election st the campaign started we were branded to be what the other Zimio guys called madoa doa and we were told that as, as long as the Azimio is concerned, Azimio ends in Awasi. Once you get into Nyanza, it's an ODM zone. Mm. So you can imagine I'm campaigning in my own constituency, and the guy you are campaigning for to be president comes there and says that me and Mama Doa Doa, me and my party, they should not elect my candidates. He comes there three, four days to elections and says, no, if you're not in ODM, what should we elect you? He goes to Kisumu, where we had uh, candidates like Ranguma and Olago. And says that, in fact, some of them are even sent away, just away from the Azimio rallies. So, so it was purely a protest that as soon as the elections were done, we had a neck meeting and we saw no reason at all. Mm -hmm. and, and we didn't, actually it didn't matter to us whether the courts were going to say Raila was president or not. You, uh, whatever, whatever happened. But that, that's why we left before the court determined. So the, even, the if, yeah. even if Azimio had won the No, we're not going to go remain there. You were still going to it be joined the such, Kanya Kanza. If it was such a terrible relationship. Mm. Paul and Lugu. Yeah. You know, you, you, go to, you, go to Kwanza, rally, you go to a rally. You go to a rally. And someone says. <laughs> let, let City welcome you with a proverb. <laughs> Chuli, just, please, calm the man down. <laughs> I, I, I was rather hoping he would continue speaking because... <laughs> When he, when he comes You're down, Kondani. he'll tone down He'll're what talking. he wants to say, and I don't want him to tone it down. <laughs> <Anyway>. <laughs> no, not quite. <laughs> not quite. Yeah. Our proverbs for the whole of this week come from the country of DRC. Yes. Mm. Okay. Yes. And our proverb for today is, being well-dressed does not prevent one from being poor. Yes. Now, my colleagues were of the view that actually you could turn this thing around a little bit mm -hmm. and saying, being poor doesn't prevent you from being well dressed because i'm saying being well dressed doesn't prevent you from being poor and they said yeah <laughs> you, <laughs> it's interesting. you can be poor but still well dressed mm. yes but you're still well dressed yes. Shima, what do you make of that problem very many things mm. and uh, i'll give you an example of what happened to me when i was 18 19 years old mm. and this is my first time in nairobi um, I went to school in Busia, a school called Butola Boys High School. It's and a very well-known school. And yeah. I, in that year, I was the best in my class, and I think second best in the district, or best in the district. The MP then was a gentleman called Masahalia Ekoyada. Mm -hmm. uh, he was minister. Was he minister for finance? For energy. Then? For, oh, energy, for energy, energy at that point. Mm -hmm. yeah, he so was he, finance, then went to energy. Yes. yes. So yes. then he asked that, uh, he asked that boy to be brought to his office in Nairobi. So I come to Nairobi. And uh, I'm there with my, I don't know if you remember those days, I think you should remember, there were those sub jeans <laughs> and uh, trousers called Van Basten. So there, I'm there with my <laughs> sub jeans and go into Nyayo house in the morning. The jeans were new. 
I don't think they were. They were a bit worn out. Yes. Until they were hand down from my brother. Okay. And and and, and this t-shirt. Mm -hmm. So I'm down there and I'm saying I'm going to see the minister. <laughs> and this watchman looks at me and says, "Which minister? This is near your house." Yes. And I'm, I'm 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 such. This is this is actually my first week in Nairobi, ever. So I stayed down there for like four hours. And you didn't have a cell phone to call the minister. <laughs> I don't think well, cell phone no, is no, really, no, yeah. and even if there were, no, I wouldn't have no, no, owned no, one. That was my point. <laughs> so, <laughs> so later then I, uh, I see someone I know and tell him that I'm here because I was to see the minister. So later I went, later they allowed me to go upstairs to see him and they say, he said, and the guy used to speak very good English. Mm -hmm. He's still alive actually, I get, get to see him in Lovington once in a while. He says, I'm told you have been blocked since morning. What is the problem? Told him I don't know the problem. Told me this is the problem. The way you are dressed, you can't be allowed in like this, even if you are sharp and whatever it is. And he gave me two thousand shillings and told me, pass by Gikomba and buy a suit, buy yourself a shirt, a nice shirt, and a trouser and a jacket. Next time you come to, to any office, put on nice shoes, mm. dress nicely. The watchman will allow you in. Okay. I said you could look with the governor for CIA mm. Rango that the days you are brokest is the days you wear your best suit. Mm. It covers so many things, so I relate. <laughs> <laughs> so I relate. So, I relate. <laughs> <laughs> so the proverb is quite a, a profound one. In, in terms of even if I look at it two ways. Mm. Yeah. It's a very profound uh, uh proverb. Mm. Yeah, because it, it tells you that you know you should always never wear what is inside you. Mm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You should always never wear what is inside you. Let those ones be your things. Very good. So when you wow. leave your house in the morning mm. to face the world, dress for the day. Show your best face. Mm. <laughs> Very well put. I like that. I like that. Very well put. Mm. Very well put indeed. Yeah, yeah. Hi. Back to the MDG <laughs> in Kenya, Kwanzaa. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm. So in your post-election coalition agreement, yeah. yeah. What does MDG get in Kenya, Kwanzaa? Um, uh, we get, I'm the only MP in the party, and then we got eight MCAs in Busia County. Those are the ones we won in the last election, seven, uh, in Busia County. And, and, and so we get, uh, board appointments, you know, I'm the speaker's panel, uh, in parliament. I was supposed to be chair of a committee, but I thought I need time to do the things I want to do. Mm. So I needed something that is not controversial and. And will, that will not take most of my time away from the constituency. I also thought that not having campaigned with the Kenya Kwanza team, uh, it would not be good to chair, take their, put, their, their, their seats and chair a committee. Mm -hmm. So I thought the best thing would be... So you thought your shares are not even go, Not even to go to cabinet. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, it was going to also ground me. I have things I want to do politically mm -hmm. for the future. And I thought uh, having my time free would be a good thing. And then we, we then get appointments in board positions based on the numbers we have that I've just told you about. Mm. Yeah. Well, Shimon, when you were campaigning in Uganda, and even as your MCAs were campaigning in Busia and all your other, other candidates in yeah. Kisumu and elsewhere, yeah. you were campaigning using the Azimio Manifesto. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Basically, by that's and large. Yes, yes, that's true. And now here you are championing mm. the implementation of the Kenya Kwanza Manifesto. Yes. Do you find yourself sometimes conflict forgetting? LFC, no. Uh, hustler fund. <laughs> no, I don't forget for this reason. I've been around for a while, uh, Latif. And I can tell you that in terms of the solutions that we need as a country, things that will change this country, all the political sides are agreed, really. They are very minute nuances about <laughs> the difference between these manifestos. It's always very minute. Mm. Yeah, because the issues that face our people are common. And when we are campaigning, if, if you listen to either sides, the only difference is the decibels hmm. uh, with, the, which, with, with which these <laughs> things are said and, and the, the, the emotions with which they are said. But in terms, of the, in terms of what needs to be done and how these new things need to be done, we largely agreed. And, and so, whereas one side wanted uh, to have these 6,000 shillings given to the, to, to, in quotes, hustlers, because these guys that are being targeted by the 6,000 are, are indeed the hustlers, if you're to use that hustler word in the larger sense of the word. Mm. And, and so it's, it's always difficult. And, and that's why uh, without casting assumptions, in Kenya, politicians move positions willy-nilly. 
Because th- there's nothing really serious about their manifestos. If, if you ask me in terms of differences, you picked if you picked the Kenya Kwanza manifesto today and picked the Zimba manifesto today, and you go to the chapters on water, chapters on education, very small and minute differences. So I, I, I hardly get to a situation where I'm not able to say what I need to say. Uh, or, or, or the only t- times when I, I would probably um, have a slip of the tongue would be the names of the two. Mm. Sometimes I, I, will, I will call President Riley and say, oh, William Ruto. Huh. But, but, but in terms of the issues, <laughs> so based on in terms, that, in terms of the issues, yeah. I think yeah, the issues are the same. <laughs> Many would argue that maybe it's the same fellow who wrote the manifesto, even. Um, but, I'm not uh, sure about that. Okay. No. So, <laughs> let's, in terms of the issues, mm-hmm. Did it matter then who delivered it sitting at the helm? No, because I, because yeah. because many would say how if it did it if it did matter how would it be so easy for you to to stand up and believing in an individual to deliver it as a member of a party because we know and anybody can try to argue but we know that in Kenya today mm-hmm. the practice of political parties is not vested in an ideology it's vested in the character of the person who leads the party that's we know true. that cannot that's be true. argued that's true so one who follows a party or one who follows a coalition today more or less is following the leader that's right. how is it then easy to move everything the whole kit and caboodle from one to another it would only mean then that it doesn't matter who delivers this thing so long as there's somebody at the helm that's all you need you know, ours was purely a protest. Mm. I, I can't say that more. Because let me give an example. In, in 2019, no, 2017, mm. I ran in my party. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, again, I had the same, same problem. I won the election 2017. The ODM guys came and forced the turning officer to announce somebody else. Mm. And I walked away. I went to court. The I could say it go back to the elections. Mm. The Court of Appeal said, go back. Mm-hmm. Supreme Court said, go back. And then I went back to the people. Mm. And for the first time since independence, and I can confirm, confirm this to you, a party that is not associated with an Odinga won a by election in Nyanza. For the first time since independence. Mm. When I came back to parliament, I didn't join Jubilee. Mm-hmm. Even when they used to send 20, 30 MPs to come and abuse me every day for eight weeks in the campaigns. When I came back to parliament, I walked right to the NASA side, mm-hmm. even ha- if, 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 even after they did all the things they s- did to me, mm. walked to the NASA side, and by the way, up to the time I left Parliament in in August 2022, I've never, mm. in the two terms I was in Parliament, voted with the Jubilee, whether it was TNA at that time or URP, I'd never for a single time voted with them, not once in my lifetime. Mm. Why? Because I was I, I belonged to the other side. I belonged to initially COD, then later, uh, in 2017, I didn't affiliate with any side. Mm. Uh, it was MDG, MDG. But when I came to parliament, I affiliated with myself with the NASA, which were not in government. But strangely, eight months later, when Uru and Rutu disagreed and uh, Rutu were being purged, from nowhere, mm. ODM says that the Chiang's position in health committee He's being held because of our mag- magnanimity. And therefore, he has to be moved. <laughs> when I can assume one, the rest were being removed. Without provocation, without reason. In fact, I was shocked. Because I didn't belong to their coalition. But I was focusing with them, voting with them on every matter, every motion bill. Why, why do you think that was so? Why do you think you were removed? Because clearly, some people agitated for you to be removed. Of course, and, and the reason was simple. That you have to be painted with a broad brush that was being used to paint the other side that was disturbing in quotes disturbing Uhuru and so mm. paint him as a, a Ruto guy from the word go because so that when you go back to relations his party cannot grow it was that simple Mwishimewa, how many terms have you been in parliament this is my third term okay mm. before you are there any MPs in Ugenya who have had three terms in yes. the history of Ugenya yes who maybe not consecutively but uh, even mine is not consecutive yes yeah but, but how but, many Rango did mm-hmm. Ondiek did mm-hmm. yeah Ugenya generally is a two. two people. We've we've had five uh, members since of parliament 1983. So far. <laughs> our, our, our first parliament, our first member of parliament was called Odero Sar. Odero Sar was there, for, I think, for a time. Mm-hmm. Yes, he was. Then on uh, the gentleman called Matthew Zogutu. Yes, mm-hmm. who was there for I think two terms. It two. was two mm-hmm. terms. Yeah. Then Orengo intermittently, mm-hmm. three. Mm-hmm. Then Ondiek also intermittently, three. three. Yes. And then now myself. Precisely. Three. Now, 
But all these people, how many of them were affiliated to a party that Raila Odinga was in? The older ones don't count. I'm talking about the even, Raila, even the recent ones. The Raila Odinga era. Even in the Raila Odinga era. So we're talking era, about from what 1988 or 92. No, if, if, no, the Raila Odinga era didn't actually begin in those times that we speak of. Not in the 80s. No, Raila Odinga era is 97. 97, yes, 97, 97 yes, upwards. Yes. Mm. Uh, and 97 upwards, this is what happened. 97, um, in 97, Orengo came back to parliament yes. in a party called Ford Kenya. Yep. Yes. When that year, the larger Nyanza was swept by a party called MD NDP. Yep. Then now in 02, Orengo then decided... In fact, the word, I was at the university at that time, and the word he used, he came to the university, I was in Moy, and he told us that, yes, Kenya needs change, but mm -hmm. I don't think Ibaki mm -hmm. is a change Kenya needs. Mm -hmm. And so he jumped off and ran for president in a party called SDP. And now in that year, Ondiek, who had been a very close friend of Moy's and, and, and was in parliament because of Moy for a while, then came into NDP, not NDP now, but now it had become, it had become now. L. It, can be, it, had, it was LDP now that mm. joined and then became LDP. No, no L came much later. No, it's L. LDP. 02 is the L. LDP was the one. Oh, 202. 202 is the L oh, because it was 97. No, that was the L. 97 no. NDP. Mm. Yes. Then 98, 9, uh, Jogos was the Tinga. No, no. Mm. And then right, that, LDP was LDP. comes in. Yes. And so, the because of uh, Rengo's move to run for president, Ondiek gets in through LDP now. He serves up to up to so for two terms the people of Kenya have not gone with Raila's party not two terms severally no we are talking about now from 97. Post, post 97 yes post 97 it is it is a uh, 97 orengo we have that then um sdp then then now zero yeah. two it was Raila party mm. zero seven Raila party 13 also i came in in odm oh he's a Raila yes party. i came in an odm and and strangely and, and i wanted to say something on that issue because everyone tells me that i've been in parliament because of Raila. Mm. i'm the only mp in nyanza and I can swear by the Bible on this, that Raila has never campaigned for. Not once. Hmm. He's never carried my hand anywhere in this world. Neither did you and go to ask, the ring. And ask anybody to vote for me. No. Never. Did and so you, when people say... Did you seek his blessing? Like Ndu is asking. I didn't think I needed to. And I've never sought his blessing for any elections. Because in 02, as a young man, I was 20. Or in 2013, when I started campaigning, I was 29 years old, 28. And... I feared that if I went to him, he would say, you're a young man, wait. So I decided that I don't want to get involved with his things. And I also didn't want to get this thing of, you know, and, and on this issue, people spoil his name for no reason. That you have to give him money to get his ticket. In 2013, I never did. Of course, the issue is that I had to go to court. I had to go through a very long process. I almost actually died in the primaries. And that's why when, after I won, I swore on my life that I will never run in that party. Come rain, come shine. I would rather leave politics. Mm. And that's why I started my party just immediately after that election. Sure. You know, there's somewhere I'm going with my question. Go ahead. You see, the people of Ugenya seem to agree with you. Because for them to keep electing you, mm. when the rest of Nyanza, well, predominantly the rest of Nyanza, mm. uh, people seem to vote for ODM, mm. uh, Shakil Shabir seems yeah. to have achieved the same thing. Yes, yes. But the point I'm making is, what is it that you feel resonates the people of Ugenya that makes them elect you time and time again when for the presidency they know they're going to vote for Raila I would I'm sure someone else would have his answer on why I get elected but I think I've been able to respond to some of the needs of my constituents mm -hmm. I've been able to be honest with them if you walked into Kenya today and asked them what did you change promise in the election they'll tell you because I'm very honest with them, I tell them for these four years or five years, I want to ensure that this and this is done, this and this is done, this is and this is done. Mm. Now, my success also has to be attributed to the fact that the people that I took over from had not done so much in the constituency. And, and so <laughs> uh, I was starting for almost, almost um, uh, you know. You had, a, you had a blank slate. So to speak. Yes. And then number two is that um, I, uh, much else, I would say they're not done so much also. But like, for example, Rengo didn't have CDF for long. He only had CDF for one term mm. Mm. and they also had cdf only for one term and, and so there's only so much they could achieve because that time the cdf was, was, was quite little but there are also investment i've done in the constituents with personal resources things that i believe in that i go out for like it will surprise you people think that i, I use cdf but every year i spend 12 mm. million shillings personal money i go to kenya seed get seed for my country because i realize that 
for them to have a good life, the first thing is to have food. So every year when I can, I will go to Kitale, get seeds, bring to them. I will try to get the government to give fertilizers, the, the one that is subsidized, I will make sure that I go there, get it for them. I liberalize the way I give bursaries, so everybody who applies gets. Mm -hmm. And unless there's a reason why you think you really must not get, I got a very strong scholarship program that ensure that every person in Nugenya who is who has a child called or asked to join a national school has to go there for the four years. We pay for you. Um, I think Nugenya probably is the only constituency now that has five colleges built in the last eight years or ten. Because uh, I believe that from the, for this country, I believe that we needed to, to invest in tertiary institutions, okay. tertiary education. Because I checked that out of 10 students from high schools, only two and a half go to the university. So I said, I need to invest in tertiary. Mm. And so I built a teacher's college there with CDF. Then we built a technical college there. We built a medical training college. We built the only second forestry college in the country that is almost being operationalized. And we've now just, just finished constructing the only agriculture college in that place. We, in our time, got the only first ever tarmac offside the Kisumu, uh, uh, Busia Road. Mm -hmm. we, 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 we've... In my opinion, we've done well with infrastructure and education. We also try to address especially issues of women doing business and uh, young people having a chance at getting a trade in, in, in a skill in life. Mm -hmm. It's been our focus. And, uh, and, and I think they also know that I'm honest with them. Where <laughs> things can happen, I tell you this will happen. Where things can't happen, you tell uh, them as it is. Yes, I got a small temper, mm. uh, which they also know about. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I, I I get agitated if you don't understand me, or you you mm. you, you know. So so basically, they know David Chiang is. Mm. Yes, you, you can blow a fuse just like just that. Like yes, that. they know David Chiang is. <laughs> and and then then accept it. Dog it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> so so I, I'll attribute it uh, to the fact that I've been honest to my constituents. Mm. They know what I stand for. They also know that I'm hard. I'm a hard-headed person. Mm. 